Hi guys, today you're going to learn how to read a DNA fingerprint. The first way we're going to look at using a DNA fingerprint is to test for either maternity, paternity, and also family relationships. Now, a child or a baby will share 50% of their DNA with each parent, meaning half of the bands in the DNA fingerprint should come from mom and half should come from dad. So if you look at this example, um, I know who the mother is, but I'm unsure if the father is man one or man two. And so the first thing I do is I eliminate any of these bands that came from mom, so that match up with mom. And it turns out there were three bands that came from the mother. The next thing I do is I want to try to see which father or which potential father has the bands that are remaining. So I need to account for all remaining bands within the father. There are five uh, that need to be present in the father's DNA. And you can see here, has highlighted in green, that the child does share all five of those bands with man number two. So we can say with a very high percent certainty that man number two is the father of this child. Now, if you wanted to see family relationships, uh, there is a 50% similarity between siblings. So they'll share about half of their bands with each other or one out of every two bands should match. And there is a 25% similarity between any aunts, uncles with their nieces and nephews, as well as grandparents with their grandchildren. And so that means about one out of every four bands should match in those situations. So you can use them to determine, you can use DNA fingerprints to determine both mother and father, but also different relationships within the family. All right, the next thing you can use the DNA fingerprint for is to identify a murder suspect. Suspects will share about all 100% of their DNA with any evidence left behind, or they should if they're the one that left the evidence behind. That's because any cell that you leave behind has 100% of your DNA, and any cell that they test in your body should have the same 100% of the DNA. And so uh, all of the bands of the evidence left behind should match up with the suspect if they left that evidence behind. So the first thing we'll do is eliminate any evidence that may have come from the victim. And then what's left should match up with the suspect. And so you can see here with this evidence, I have seven suspects, but it's pretty clear that uh, suspect number five has matching bands to all of the bands in the evidence, which means suspect five did leave that DNA evidence behind. It doesn't mean that suspect five committed the crime, only that he or she left that evidence at the crime scene. So it's up to the lawyers to determine whether or not that meant suspect five committed the crime. In this next example, again, we have evidence and seven suspects, but you can see here that um, suspect two is the one who left that evidence behind, and we can now place suspect two at the crime scene. Uh, so that's it, how you read a DNA fingerprint.